I'm Arthur. Hi, I'm Candice. And we're your hosts for What's New with Microsoft 365. And today we're going to talk about what's new in September. But before we get started, we first want to thank everyone that gave us feedback in last month's video. Your feedback is very important to us, and we love hearing from all of you. We read all the comments, and they help us evolve the show um, and try some new things along the way. This month, we're focusing on GA, or general availability. It's updates that you can try out now. Topics around insider updates are going to be moved to the second half of the episode, and you'll see this new structure reflected in the left nav over here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get started with updates for what's new for our GA topics. We're really excited about this update, which is dark mode for Outlook Mobile and Office.com. So we're gonna throw it on over to Vivian to get a little more insight with one of the designers. I'm here with Sunman, and she's a designer for dark mode for office.com. She also worked closely with other product teams like the Outlook Mobile design team to ensure full parity of the feature across platforms. And we're talking specifically about dark mode for office.com and Outlook Mobile app today. Mm -hmm. So let's start with basics. What is dark mode? Dark mode is a choice to change appearance of your app to use a darker color palette. So when you turn it on, it changes prominent background from lighter to darker colors. And what's the benefit of using it? So dark mode offers inverted color system. If you're a user in a low light settings, the aesthetic of the app will blend better with your surroundings. For example, many engineers at Microsoft prefer darker UI, so they can better focus on the code on the screens. They also helps with your uh, reducing eye strain as well. So if you're a mobile user, it also helps you saving a lot of battery lives. And how do you toggle the feature on in office.com and also the Outlook mobile app? If you're on office.com, find your profile photo on the upper right corner, and then there's a setting icon right next to it. Open the pane and toggle on the dark mode. If you're in the mobile users, open your left navigation pane, tap setting icon, scroll all the way down to the preference section, and there will be a toggle to turn it on. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to check out this feature, it's rolling out now. Thanks, Vivian. Also, you can switch to a darker canvas with dark mode on OneNote for Mac. So now there's an all new streamlined Microsoft to do experience, including new design, accessible wherever you are, and more integration with Microsoft apps and services. So we're gonna throw it on back to Vivian to get a little more information about this new update. Mary is a product marketing manager with Microsoft To Do, and she's joining us today to share updates about what's new with To Do's design, as well as how you can access it from anywhere and increase integration across apps and services. So, what's new with the design? Well, for starters, the new version of Microsoft To Do offers a lot more customization options. So, you can tailor it to suit yourself and your lists with a wide range of background options. And we even have a dark mode if you want to give your eyes a rest. What's a unique feature in To Do? One of our favorites is a smart daily planner called My Day. My Day uses smart suggestions to help you prioritize what you need to accomplish on any given day. And then each day it resets so you can start fresh with a blank slate. But don't worry, anything that you didn't get done the day before will show up in your smart suggestions. Good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> and what's new with To Do and Syncing? So Microsoft To Do is available on and syncs across all platforms. So you can take your lists with you wherever you are, whether you're on Windows, Android, iOS, iPad, Mac. And for Android and Windows users, we also have the ability to toggle between personal and work accounts. So you can manage all of your tasks in one app, whether you're at your desk or at the grocery store. And what can you share about To Do's increased integration across apps and services? Well, we're really on a mission to connect tasks experiences across Microsoft apps and services. Now, for To Do users, this means that you can see all of your tasks in one centralized view. So right now, you'll see things like flagged email or tasks created in Outlook tasks assigned to you in Planner. You can even see things like tasks that you created in Cortana using an Amazon Echo. The whole integration opportunity is such a huge focus area for us. So in the months ahead, you're gonna see more and more of these kind of connected experiences showing up. And how can customers get started with all these great new updates? Oh, it's a snap. Just download Microsoft To Do on whichever devices you use. Thanks so much for sharing all these great updates with us today, Mary. And we look forward to future updates coming out from To-Do. Awesome. So how many times have you sent a PowerPoint presentation over email? 
and wanted the person to focus on a specific slide, but they had to scroll through the whole presentation to get to the slide, now they don't have to. PowerPoint for the web now supports the ability to share a presentation by linking directly to an individual slide with anyone you want. To get started, right-click on the slide thumbnail, select the link to slide, and copy the link. You can then paste the link in an email or a chat to share with others. Another exciting feature we're releasing to PowerPoint for the web is Presenter Coach. Now, Presenter Coach uses the power of AI to give you real-time on-screen feedback to improve your public speaking skills. When you rehearse your presentation with this feature, it'll give you helpful tips on pacing, suggest inclusive language, detect when you use fillers like basically or um, and it notices when you're just reading your slides. To get started, just select Slideshow, Rehearse with Coach. So I wanted to follow up on last month's update on Yammer Mobile. There's a new mobile experience to help you connect, discover, and share in a way that's easy on the thumbs and the eyes. There's a new card-based design that sharpens content in your feed and helps you focus on discussions that matter most. It has easier to read formatting and styling. There's a new grid layout for docs and images that make it easier to preview and engage with images and files. And there are link previews. And inline videos including stream updates so you don't have to lead the feed. Make sure to update your Yammer app for Android and iOS app to check out these new updates which I really need to do. <laughs> but we're gonna throw it back over to Vivian, who has a little information about Intune support. This is Mayunk, and he is a product marketing manager for Intune. And he's gonna chat with us today about an update that admins have wanted for a really long time. So what's new with Intune this month? Well, there's tons of new stuff for Intune this month whether it's for our Apple users, our Windows users, our Android users, and that's what I want to talk to you about. Uh, we've got this new Android Enterprise Management for work devices, that is devices that are owned by the organization and delivered to end users for work purpose only. With Intune support now available for corporate Android devices, what benefits are now available to admins as well as end users? From an IT admin perspective, they get the reliability of making sure that the configurations and the policies and the security that they deploy on those devices, they are actually executed the way they expect them to be. It doesn't matter who the OEM is, where the phone came from, as long as it supports the Android enterprise criteria, those policies will take effect. For end users, the benefit is more convenience because they can enroll using zero touch enrollment, um, self-service security, multi-factor authentication, and a whole new end-user experience in the Microsoft Intune app that they're going to love. And uh, most importantly, I know our users, they care a lot about this, their work data is, very se is kept separate from their personal data on these devices. And how do admins get started with this feature? So this is something that has been in public preview and it is now out of public preview. So IT admins should be seeing it in their Azure tenants uh, shortly, if not already. Um, then all they need to do is create the right device configuration profile, uh, apply it to their work devices, and then they can check out our blog, which is at aka.ms slash Intune work device to get more details on the benefits, the configurations, and so on. That's great. I know a lot of people will be really excited about this feature. Thanks so much for chatting with us today. Thanks for having me. And now for a long-awaited feature for admins. Adding and configuring new users just got way easier. So the update here is that you can create and use a template to save time and standardize settings when adding multiple users in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Templates are useful if you have users who share many properties, like those who work in the same role or at the same location. You'll only have access to the templates you own and create as an admin. You won't have access to the other templates. So the benefit here is that user templates streamline the work to add and configure new users, freeing up your time to focus on other priority activities. So you have two ways to do this. The first option is, in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, go to Users, Active Users, User Templates, and Add Template. The second option here is that you'll also have the option to create a template after you add a user manually. This next update is going to help security teams get critical alerts in a timely manner. And that's automated incident response in Office 365 ATP. This applies powerful automation capabilities to investigation and response workflows and improves the effectiveness and efficiency 
of your organization's security teams. It's available to organizations with the following SKUs. Office 365 ATP Plan 2, Office 365 E5, and Microsoft 365 E5 Security. Awesome. Yeah, it is very important that we have these security updates. Yeah. So there's a new evaluation lab in Microsoft Defender ATP that removes the challenges of machine installation and configuration. It provides the perfect environment to verify a potential platform and learn about new features. This also allows security experts to familiarize themselves with the product, learn about new features, or use the lab environment for attack simulations. So you don't have to use your own. To access the Evaluation Lab, select Evaluation and Tutorials, and then Evaluation Lab directly from the navigation menu. There's an updated Outlook on the web experience now. Yay! It has a new modern design, smarter features like meeting insights and suggested replies, and some faster framework. It's available to all customers now, so you can check it out by signing into Outlook on the web. Now we're moving on to Microsoft 365 updates for insiders. If you're an insider, some of you might have these features and some of you might get these at a later date. So let's dive into the first update. If you're a Forms Pro user, the app now has multilingual support. Basically, it allows you to create a form in multiple languages without having to merge different surveys together. This helps Pro users reach a broader audience and let survey responders write back in their preferred language. To get started, select the three dots in the top right corner in your Forms Pro app and select Multilingual from the drop-down menu. For all you insiders, you have it now, but for everybody else, it's coming out mid-October. Cool. So we're going to pivot a little bit over to OneNote for iPad. iPad users can now view sticky notes in OneNote. With full sticky notes integration now available, you can pull up your sticky notes as you work in OneNote for iPad to gather all your ideas, thoughts, and notes in one place. This saves you time from toggling between OneNote and your sticky notes. Sticky notes is rolling out now. There's another great feature in OneNote for Mac, and that's Recent Notes. Recent Notes helps you find the notes you need quickly by displaying a chronological list of pages you recently viewed or edited across your notebooks. You'll be able to pick up where you left off on any device and find your notes easier with a recent note suggestion. You can also toggle between recently used notes across your notebooks to simplify your digital notebook experience. Select the recent notes symbol in OneNote for Mac to get started. And if you're an insider, it's available to you this month. All right, I think that's all we've got for this month. Oh, already? Yeah. We're leaving already? Yeah. <laughs> we had a good big month. We did, yeah. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. We value your feedback. And if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. Yeah. And uh, we'll be seeing you next month. Bye. Bye. So now that you've watched this video, don't forget to check out the Microsoft 365 blog that has a little more detail about what we went over today.